here for MoBuzz TV on Tuesday, May 15th, and let's begin with more photo mapping mashups. Want to take a break from what you're doing and see what other random folks are up to in other random parts of the world? Well, Flickr Vision is a little site that shows you in real time what photos people are updating to Flickr from all over the world. As uploads happen, little windows pop up on the map, locating the uploader and sharing their photos with you. Some might be boring photos from a conference or something or an office party, or they might be jealousy inspiring vacation photos or genuine works of art. But it is an interesting way to represent the incessant online visual chatter of Flickr and the worldwide nature of its reach. Now for three tidbits of interesting innovation. First up, fake blood. And not the gross Halloween type that always runs and looks horrible after an hour and stains your costume. This time, real fake blood. The University of Sheffield reports that they've come up with an artificial blood that could be used for transfusions in emergency situations. It's made of a type of plastic and could be stored as a thick concentrate then diluted just before use. It has a much longer shelf life than real blood and doesn't need to be refrigerated. So it could be transported more easily in ambulances and to battlefields. And of course, reluctant vampires everywhere are relieved that they no longer have to take human life. So there's that too. Second neato invention today is a high-tech walking stick for the blind. Not as cuddly as a seeing eye dog, but may put Fido out of business. An Argentine professor, Marcelo Martinelli, made it to the finals of a design competition in Japan with his walking stick that combines virtual maps and GPS tracking devices. The device can load routes on virtual maps of cities that the user isn't readily familiar with, expanding their mobility. When the stick hits the ground, it activates a GPS system that guides the user through audio cues along the selected route. He says it's simple, affordable, and easy to manufacture. And lastly, in our trio of nifty new doodads, some pretty pretty e paper. LG Philips LCD of South Korea has developed the world's first A4 sized color e paper. It can display over 4,000 colors on a surface just 300 microns thick. Also cool, they're keeping green concerns in mind and say it's very energy efficient, only using energy when images on the display change. The e-paper is bendable, though not rollable and certainly not foldable. They say the product's potential uses are, quote, incredible, but don't specify what those might be. I'm guessing the future of newspapers, e-books. If you could find a way to fold them, they'd be the best paper airplanes ever. With another look into the future, let's consider iTunes for a second. Now, Steve Jobs has come out against DRM and paired up with EMI to offer DRM free tracks on the iTunes store. But it looks like for some hackers out there, Jobs just wasn't moving things along fast enough. The QT Fair Use 6 project posted their crack for the current version of iTunes 7.1.1, which would allow you to uncripple any tracks purchased on the site, making them playable on any device. Well, as long as you're a PC user, that is, the crack doesn't work for Macs. Dope. You know what's fun and exciting? Patent disputes. Yes, boys and girls, the latest big patent dispute in the tech world comes to us from Microsoft. They have recently claimed that Linux violates not one, not two, but 235 of its patents. That's a lot of patents. Microsoft is really going on the offensive here, kind of strange after their recent agreement with Novell. Their director of platform strategy was even recently quoted as saying, quote, the free software movement is dead and Linux doesn't exist in 2007. Seems like a bit of wishful thinking, but people fear that Microsoft will do whatever they can in terms of litigious quagmires to keep the free software movement stifled. And finally, um, if you feel too distanced from the war in Iraq, uh, worry not. You can now go online and shoot an Iraqi. Ah, you know, there's no way to say that that doesn't sound hopelessly tasteless, and I guess that's part of the point. Iraqi artist Wafa Bilal has locked himself in a room with a 24-hour webcam and some souped-up paintball guns. You can go onto his website, log on, and aim and shoot the paintball guns at him if you want. As an installation, I suppose it does make quite a statement about what many Iraqis may be feeling, trapped, under siege, unable to wander freely outside. But really, even though it's just paintballs and it's all in the name of art and stuff, wouldn't you feel kind of like a tool going online and shooting at this dude? Just a bit. That's all for MoBuzz TV today. Until we meet again, I'm gonna go try shooting. Nah, I can't go shooting Iraqi online. I'll watch that Flickr Vision thing instead.